Welcome to the Rocking Horse Dreams. Today we are going to take a look at To Cowl by Wolfgang Kramer and Michael Kiesling, with art by Franz Volwinkel and produced by Ravensburger and Rio Grande Games. It supports two to four players and should play in about two hours. In the game, players are explorers trying to uncover temples and dig up treasure. Inside the box you get an instruction booklet, a very functional insert, a game board, 36 terrain hexes including 3 volcano tiles, 24 treasure markers, 48 temple tiles, 1 expedition leader, 18 workers, 2 camps, 1 turn indicator and 1 scoring marker in each of the 4 player colors. The expedition leader is really just another worker but counts as 3 workers when figuring out majority. 4 double sided summary cards, and I have also included 10 gems for each player to represent action points. There are two ways to play the game, a basic game and an auction game. We're going to look at the basic game. First let's look at the terrain hexes. There are four types of terrain, temple, treasure, jungle, and volcano. All of the hexes except volcanoes have a feature in the center and then paths with stones on them. Stones come into play for movement. The temples all have base values. Treasure hexes have a number of treasure tiles that will be put on the hex after it is placed. Jungle hexes are blank. The volcanoes feature, well, a volcano, and initiate a scoring round. To set up the game, lay out the board, give each player all of their pieces and a summary card. For the basic game, you won't need the turn indicator. Shuffle the land hexes per the letter on their back, and then place them in order so that G is on the bottom and A is on top. Sort the temple squares into piles by their number. Shuffle the treasure tiles and place them in a face down draw pile, and place the score markers off the board near the scoring track. On a player's turn, they draw and play a tile. When placed, the tile must be adjacent to and accessible by at least one already placed hex by having at least one stone on a path. They then have 10 action points to spend. They don't have to use them all, but leftovers don't carry to the next turn. If a volcano tile is drawn, play is interrupted for a scoring round, and the player who drew it doesn't play the tile until their next turn. Let's look at the summary card. It notes the phases of the turn and all of the actions that can be performed. The top shows the draw and play a tile, the middle shows the actions, and the bottom shows how to score. For one action point, a player may put a worker or an expedition leader into one of their base camps. The base camp printed on the board is shared by all players. This action may also be used to move workers between the player's base camps. A player may move their expedition leader or worker for one AP per stone the worker crosses while moving. If the player cannot pay the required amount, that worker may not move. Movement from this hex to this hex requires three action points. If no stones are in a path, that path may not be traveled along. For two AP, a player may uncover a temple, one layer at a temple where they have a worker present. To represent the uncovered layer, put the next highest temple tile onto that temple. When uncovering a temple, you must uncover to the next level. So two goes to three, three goes to four, and so on. You may not skip a level, and if the level you are trying to uncover is not available, it may not be done. There is only one 10 tile, two 8 and 9 tiles, five 7 tiles, and so on, so they do get scarce quickly. This may be done a total of two times per turn per temple if you have at least two workers there. So if you have two workers each at two different temples, you could uncover each of those temples two levels. For 3 AP, you may dig up treasure if you have a worker at a site with an available treasure tile. This may also be done up to two times per turn per site if you have two workers there. For 3 AP, you may also swap treasures with another player, but you may only swap for tiles that the player has a single copy of. You may not break up a set of two or three treasures. The other player may not refuse the exchange. For 5 AP, you may play a base camp onto an empty hex. Treasure hexes with no more treasure tiles there are considered blank. Only two camps can be established by each player, and once a player has a base camp on a hex, no other player may place a camp there. For 5 AP, a player may also place a temple guard where they have a majority at a temple. A temple guard guarantees the player a majority at the temple for the remainder of the game. To do this, the player places one of the workers at the temple on top of the temple, and the rest of their workers there are removed from the game. The temple may not be uncovered anymore after the guard is placed. Each player may only guard two temples per game. So now we'll look at a scoring round. If a player draws a volcano tile, the tile is set aside and there's a scoring round. Starting with the player who drew the volcano tile, 
Each player will get a turn of 10 action points, and then they are scored. Then the next player will also get 10 action points and then be scored, so you can go into a hex that a player scored before and take a majority from them to gain points. It doesn't, however, take the points from the previous player. Players score points for a temple for each temple where they have a majority. Ties don't score. Also, treasures will score. A player scores one point for a single treasure tile, three points for sets of two, and six points for sets of three. The next player then takes their scoring turn and scores in the same way. When play gets back to the player who drew the volcano tile, they play the tile and take their normal turn. After the last hex is played, each player, including the player who played the last tile, gets another scoring turn, and whoever has the most points at the end wins. To play the auction version, players start with 20 victory points on the scoring track. A number of hexes equal to the number of players playing are displayed, and players bid with their victory points for turn order and hex selection. And that's Takao. It's a very interesting game. It definitely plays better with 3 or 4, as with 2 it doesn't offer much competition. I'm not 100% sure how I feel about the game as a whole. I generally enjoy playing it, and I'm fairly good at it, but I don't know if it's, well, fun. Maybe I haven't played it with the right people, and there's nothing wrong with the game. I'm just not sure how I feel about it. I do really enjoy it, but it's a bit too thinky for a lot of people, and the base game can go a bit long. There is, however, a variation by Eric Andres, aka Gridunza on BGG, called Midsize to Cal that cuts about a third of the game out, which is a very nice change. The game as a whole is definitely worth a shot.